So I'm going to go through the pattern step by step as it's laid out in the pattern. So we're going to start with our main pocket and our flap. So we have a exterior which has deck of a light out of the seam allowance and our lining. And the same with our flap, again, deck of a light out of the seam allowance and our lining. So we're going to place those right sides together along the short edge. There is a wider edge, it's going to be the short edge. Clip along there. And this one right sides together. And we're going to clip along the bottom edge here. And here we're going to sew along the very top. And here we're going to start at the seam, or out at here, where our seam allowances come in, and then around the bottom, to the straight, and back to the edge. So we're just going around the bottom of the flap. So they are sewn around the edges. Now we want to open that up. Give that a crease back because we're going to top stitch along this edge. Actually I might leave a little tiny bit of the black at the top. I think that looks quite cool. Rather than pressuring it all the way down. So we're going to top stitch along there. And we're going to get our pinking shears and go around the corners of this. Trim that down a bit. And snip into the very corner. You might be able to see that on the black, see I've snipped right into the corner. But don't cut your stitching, just come into the edge. like that so that we can then turn that through nicely like that so that's folded through bring that to the to a, a flat and the same with that side So we're now going to top stitch the seam we've just sewn on both of those, across there and on those. So we have top stitched around there and across the top. So now we want to place our magnetic snap. So I have my two sides and my washers and I have marked a centre line and the distance we're down we need from the top. So then it's just a matter of cutting our slots. Now this stuff frays terrible, so I am going to put a little piece of glue or put a glue on the other side of this just to stop it fraying out. So if you've got some fray check or something like that, if you can see your cuts, yes. I use the Helmer fabric glue, which I find great for this sort of thing. So now we'll put our male portion in there. So what I've done is I have lined it up like that worked out where it's going to be and put a hole where it needs to be. I find this best rather than measuring because it's easy enough to get it wrong. So I've just put a hole in there. Now I'm just going to put a bit of deck of a light on the back because this lining is fairly thin and I haven't been able to interface it because interfacing doesn't stick to it. So we'll go like that on the back. And that is our magnetic snap in place. Now if you're putting a name tag on here, you might want to do this before you get too much further. If you put it up there or down there, I might put mine down there, I think. Right, so that we can put that aside for now. So we want our two main pieces, which are mirrored and our lining. So put those together, so that's right side together, and line those up. And 
And what we're going to do is sew around the inside of the box. So we're going to get as close as we can to the deck of a light without sewing on it. So we're just going to sew around the inside of those rectangles on both pieces. So that's both of those done. Now we want to cut that down the middle a little bit, cut to the end and then snip into our corner. Don't cut your cotton but snip right into the corner. Give it a bit of a crease over in the sides and at the bottom and push it through. I'm going to turn my little iron on as well because I think it always pays to iron this if you can. If you can, it gives it a much nicer finish. So I'm going to give that a bit of a press. So as you can see, I've also basted around the edge just to try and stop my fabric fraying. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of double-sided tape down either side of my zip. These are a little bit longer than what's required. She does tell us what we need in length, but I'll trim these down once I've attached them. So what we want to do is have it closing to the top peak. So centre it in the hole with it closing towards the top, like that. Take the other side off. Like that. We'll do the same with the other one. So we're now going to stitch a rectangle around each of those boxes on both sides. Now I'm going to leave long tails and pull them through the back rather than back stitching. So now we want to take this together and pop it on a front middle. Now that's right sides together. Clip around the edge. And then we want to baste around the edge. So baste right around the edge of that. So now we want to attach our sides to our main. So what we want to do is line that up at the bottom. So we'll get our clips, line up the bottom And I'm just going to work that around like that. I'm going to take the top, line that up at the top like that. And then work back down to meet the other side. And that fits like a glove. Do the same on the other side. Now if you need to, you can cut some little snips in this side. Like that. So now we're going to sew down both of those side seams at the allotted seam allowance. So 
So that is all sewn. Now we are asked to cut our seam allowance down a little bit. So that's all sewn and it's trimmed down to the required seam allowance. So I'm going to try something a little bit different here. I'm going to try putting this right sides together with the thin end which is up here and sandwiching it that in between so that then I'm not needing to bind that seam. So let's give that a try. So just clip that around in there over the top of the seam we've just sewn. Now what the pattern has you do is put it on this side and then bind that seam. I'm going to try this. If it doesn't work, then I will be doing it the same as the other way. Down to the bottom. And bring it along over the top like that. Push it into the the curve like that. I'll do the same with this side. Right, so now I'm just going to sew around both of those seams. So that is what you've got, and then I'm simply going to Turn that through. This is where I hope what I've done works. And then there's no need for binding. Like that. Push that out. So that is the front. Now she has an ingenious way of how to make your binding thinner and remove bulk from that seam. So do check out the designer's video, it's really good. And now we will carry on with the rest of the bag. So we fused or sewn, basted two of our back and main body together. We've marked the centers and we've marked the centers in our top and bottom. So now we want to line up our centers top and bottom now because the bottom is flat I always like to clip along the flat piece before I start going around the curves same with the top the top is flat And if you bring your clips down to about where the seam allowance is going to be, it'll be much easier to get it accurate. Now, then you can, if you're coming from this way, you can just push that down into the gap until you get it at the right place for the seam allowance. These curves fit so perfectly. She's got this really nicely. Now you'll see in the pattern, she has this piece where you trim that off when you've finished. So it's like that. Okay. So now we're going to sew around there, keeping those as even as we can because we're going to trim those up later. So that's all sewn and now she wants us to trim that dot, top corner to be the same shape as the actual lining piece because that is the main shape of the bag. Like 
So that is our front pocket. Isn't that shape cool? I think that is awesome. So now we're going to take our pockets, side pockets, and we're going to line them up with our lining right sides together. So the top edge is the wide edge of the pocket. So we're going to sew across the top, turn them right side out, and top stitch along the top as well. So that's sewn and top stitched along the top. Now we want to get our side gussets and put those together at the bottom. Like that. And we're going to stitch across the bottom of those. So you can do this in any order you want. Then you want to sew down each side with it being in like that. So you could have carried on sewing up there and then come back and sew from the bottom up because it's going to be better to go from the bottom up on both of these I think. We want that edge straight along there. So we're going to sew down both of those sides. So there's our two side pockets all sewn together. And there goes my fabric frame. So we take our bottom. Now this is our exterior piece. We've got the Decaville Heavy on the bottom. Take one of each of these and place it right sides together along the bottom. So we're going to sew down each of those sides at the allotted seam allowance. So what you can also see I've done is I've opened that up with the seam towards the middle and top stitched down each side of those. So this is our middle and it's top stitched with the top stitching or the seam allowance going into the middle. So we want to do the same with our lining piece. So we've got our bottom lining and our two side pieces. So we want to put those right sides together sew down there and do exactly the same so that is our lining as you can see we've turned the seam the same way and made it exactly the same as the back so line up your sides and mark your center points on there as well and we'll put all that to one side what we need now is our zip. Now I've put a pull on from either end, so we've got two pulls. Now you might find it easier. In fact, I will put my pulls on after I have attached it. Then we need our gussets. Now I have interfaced my fabric and put Decaville Light out of the seam allowance as requested. And I can't interface that, it does not adhere. And that is our main, or the bigger one. So what we're gonna do now, is put the linings aside for a minute, put our zip right side down along the end of our main. Now you can either baste along there, double side tape or whatever you want, I'm going to go and baste it, then I will put this right side down, so we've got our zip right side down on our fabric and our lining right side down on our fabric, make sure they line up at the ends, and we're wanting to sew down that edge at the required seam allowance in the pattern. So that's all sewn. A little bit of a crease back. Like that. And I'll clip that in back out the way so that it doesn't get in the way of our other side. Now we want to take our other side and lie it right side, so you've got your zip, right side together with the other side. And you want to make sure 
that it lines up at the end. Now like me if you haven't got your zipper pull on yet you can adjust this but you don't really want to have to if you don't have to. And then on the back we would put our lining right sides together. So what you've got is again your zip right side together with your exterior and then your lining right side down on top of that. So a zipper sandwich. And we're going to sew along that edge at the same seam allowance. And then I'm going to open them up like that and top stitch down each side. So I have to redo my handle because the vinyl I did it in, I don't have enough for the straps. So that's okay. So let's draw a line. This is a very thin vinyl, so I have put interfacing down this, the middle of it. Now we should put some double-sided tape over the top of that. Now you can either put another double piece side of double sided tape or you can just clip it together like that. And because I haven't got webbing, I'm going to be doing my straps exactly the same. So what we're going to do now is sew down each side of this, or top stitch down each side. So that's all sewn. I've also marked across it at the points that we are told to in the pattern. So what we're going to do is get our gusset. And we are going to line that up to be a certain distance away from this here. slide two D-rings on there. And what we're going to do is baste across those two ends. So now that we've got that basted, what I might do is add a little bit of double-sided tape to back between the two lines, just to keep it in place. So you want a D-ring at each end, like that. I don't want to be sewing through that. So put your D-ring right down to the end, keeping it level with that there. I'm going to give it a little bit of a flex for the D-ring and push it down onto the tape. And the same with the other side. And as long as that looks level, it's a little bit further out. Right, so what we're going to do now is sew across there, down, across and back on both sides. So that is our handle, which I think is looking pretty cool. Now, in the pattern, or she says to not rivet through, or she rivets through one side, I like riveting it all the way through. So I guess that's up to you what you prefer. And as you can see, I've tried to follow my stitching. So you could have always stitched this at 6mm and then at 3 but I've tried to follow my stitching, which looks quite cool. So now we're going to move our D-ring up as far as we can get it. Get our pockets on our base. Put that right side together. So they're both right side together along the top. Now, depending on your zip, not all zips are created equal. These may, one of these may be a little bit wider. Now this fits perfectly, but in my experience, zips are not all created equal. So what we're going to do is stitch down there, open it up, and top stitch that as well. So I'll do both at the same time. Make sure that that D-wings are staying out of your way. So with the wrong side facing up of your zip, place your lining for your base and your sides on top and slide it into the clips. And the same on the other side. Now 
So what we're going to do is sew down both of those. So that is all sewn. So now we want to put that around like that so that we've got it all inside out and flip it in like that. So now we want to pull those both down. Put a clip in the bottom to hold both your lining, hold your lining down out the way. Same with that one. So you want to open that up and top stitch over there, making sure that's down flat at the back, and the same with that side. Open it up like that and top stitch down there. As you can see, it's all sewn in one and it's top stitched. So what we can do now is line up our centers. And just baste around this piece so that it keeps all the lining in place on both sides from there, around there, into there. So that is our gusset all ready to go. The handle, our pockets, and our base. So we'll put that aside. So I have got my slip pocket and as you can see I melted it horribly putting interfacing on it which is the first bit I did so I'm not doing didn't do any more. So what we're going to do is line those up right sides together so we're going to stitch around the edge and then I'll put the capping on. In the pattern, she has you stitch all the way around, leaving a turning gap here to turn it through. So that's all sewn. I'm going to pink, use my pinking shears around this corner so I get a nice clean edge. As I said, in the pattern, you would have a turning gap here. So I'm just going to turn those through. I didn't have enough left to cut another pocket, so I've just made the best I can do out of mine. So that's just the end of my stiletto. So I'm just going to baste along the top. Yeah. That's all basted along the top. I'm going to place a piece of double-sided tape down the middle of my trim. Now this is the tr same trim or the same very thin vinyl I've got on my handle. Me and double-sided tape are not always friends. Right, so I want the side that's got the interfacing on it as my outside. So I'm going to lay that so that it's just below the halfway point that way. So that I can then fold that over to line up. Now if you follow my channel you know I do this on a lot of my pockets now because I really like the way these look. So now I'm going to stitch across the edge starting in from this end. I'm not going to go out here because I'm going to trim that off. So start here, go along the edge and finish just before the edge. And then we want to snip just run your scissors up the very edge of your pocket, like that. So it's up the edge, and then you're not going to cut the trim, the pocket at the top. If you're going like this, you're going to cut the pocket off, and if you come this way, you risk cutting the pocket off. You can melt those if you're not using very melty fabric. So that is our slip pocket. So we shall get our interior lining. So I'm going to go and sew down there around and then back up the other side. Now making sure you back stitch at the top and the bottom and have it placed the distance off the bottom that's mentioned in the pattern. So that is our slip pocket. We want to get our, our other exterior back panel. Put that right sides together, or wrong sides together, sorry. So 
before I close that up, I'm going to get my D-ring tab, put a bit of double side tape down the middle, and fold those into the middle. And we're going to sew down either side of that. Right, so then we have to cut this into three equal pieces. Get your D-rings, put that over through there like that. And baste across the bottom of each of those. Now if you're using a fabric that frays a lot like mine, you might want to melt it a little bit along the edges. So we're going to put that at the top, in the middle, and one of these on either corner, and like that. So I'm going to base straight around the edge now, keeping those in place. Get our front. Now the side that doesn't have the handle, so that's this one here, we want to turn that inside out, it's easier, line that up with the centre mark on our bag, like that. Clip that in place. And at the bottom as well. So there's the centre mark, and there's the centre mark. So then we just want to clip around the bag. So that is all ready to sew, and we want to sew around there. But I'm also wanting to add my binding in because I use cotton binding. And so this is all made for this. So I'm going to start and I'm going to add that into my clip. All the way around like that. Now you can double side tape this on. But this bag fits so well, it's just going to fit and sit there, I think. Now you can pull that and give it a little bit of attention around the curves. Just a little bit, not too much. Because this is bias cut, so it is going to stretch in place. And I like mine to be firm, not baggy. Baggy binding is as bad as baggy lining. So what we want to do there... Let's turn that in a little bit. She will trim that down. Put a clip in there. Put that over the top. Let it overhang a little bit. So the first one we need to fold the edge over on. And this one we just need to leave flat. So now we want to sew all around there, making sure the binding stays down flat. So that's all sewn. So our binding is just sitting there, and all we need to do is lift that over the top. And fold that over. So then it's just a matter of folding that piece over. Because it's already got a fold ironed in it, it should sit nicely. So this time we're going to sew 
from this side. The beauty about this is you can just roll that seam out if you need a little bit more. So the bit that's folded under, you can just roll it out. I find this much easier than any other kind of binding I've tried. Um, but maybe I'm just a bit old school. I like the cotton binding. I think it sits really nicely in the bag. It's just such a low profile compared to using anything else. And when you put it in with a construction seam like this, it's just one extra seam rather than trying to get the back and the front all in together. So now we're just going to sew around there again to catch the other side of our binding. So that is our binding. That side and that side. Easy, easy peasy done. Now I suggest before doing the next side, please open your zip. I've done that before with bags. So now we want to take our top, right sides together again, line up the centre. And again, clip in place. Okay, so this zip fits so perfectly. So I make all my binding, it's so easy. I, if you're interested in a video on how I make that, please let me know in the comments. And I shall do a video on that. So we need to have our first piece turned over. Now you can join this at the top if you want it to be a little bit more. But by the, I've, I've joined it at the bottom because I just give that a bit of tension around the bottom there. Um, because it's black on black and by the time you look into the bag you're not going to see it. So again we're going to sew around there. So again, we have sewn around there. I'm just going to do a little bit of a trim off on some of those corners. So I'm not really trimming the seam as much as just cleaning it up. Again, we just pull our line, our binding up over the top. Work with the fold that's there. And again, clip around our binding. See with this binding, it just naturally wants to curve around the curve because we've pulled it slightly tight. You don't have to pleat it or anything in the corners or make sure it's sitting flat. It just wants to do that itself. Okay. So now we're just going to sew around the inside of that and we have finished our binding. So let's do our strap. I have sewn along the end and trimmed all that nicely and I will actually edge coat that when I'm done. So we're going to go up and down through our adjuster. And I'm just going to rivet these, I'm not going to sew them. So I'm going to go two that way. So keep that the same way up that way. So that it's all like that, we want to come through a swivel ring, up through our slide adjuster, like that, down through the strap, and again, we're going to make two marks or two holes. We don't want to be cutting our stitching, but we don't want them too close together either. And that is our rivets. So I shall do the other strap, and then we shall put them on the bag. Okay, two straps. So they both go through there. through this one and one through the other. 
And that obviously is the back strap set up. And that is very cool. Good size bag. Nice access into the bag, our slip pocket inside, our front pocket in there, and our slip pocket, which goes all the way through to the other side. Very cool. Sarah did a great job of this design. Now with the thick straps like that, it is quite solid. But I'm picking that you could put quite a bit of weight in that bag. So that is our bubble bag, three in one, all complete.